particularly related to this work we were just discussing, my group is now trying to look at that second and third question to a certain extent as to whether exposure to anxiety and depressive symptoms and or disorders is associated with different headache related outcomes. And also whether exposure to, you know, anxiety, depressive symptoms or disorders earlier in life may be an environmental risk factor for migraine. I think we also need to understand why there's an association between these two things. Is it genetic? Is it environmental? What is driving this association? Because that may help us understand disease biology. The other thing, I mean, there's so many things, everything needs to be done in our field. We need to grow and do more research, but we do have this impetus right now with all of these novel migraine therapies to get the pediatric trials done. And I think we're trying to reflect on that as a group, both from kind of the investigator and the industry side, because it's very challenging to get the adequate sample size of patients into these pharmaceutical studies. Um, but if we want to have pediatric specific labeling and evidence, we're going to need to figure out how to do it as a group. Um, and so, you know, specific to that project, that's what I'd like to do. And then overall, I think, you know, we need to think creatively about how to get the clinical trials done in this population. And then also like I, coming back to what we were talking about earlier, we, if we want to do justice to our patients and really develop evidence-based interventions for the pediatric age group, we need to understand the biology of the disease in that age group and not just assume that everything's the same as it is in adults, because I don't believe it is based on emerging evidence. So we need more basic science, neuroimaging, et cetera, research to understand disease biology at different ages and how that may or may not change.